Hey there, future Throne and Liberty champions. You ready to dominate? Absolutely. We're diving deep into Throne and Liberty builds today. Yeah, no more deleting characters at level 10 because you're both a dud, right? Oh, well, tell me about it. Been there, done that. But Throne and Liberty, they're mixing things up. No more cookie cutter classes here, right? Yeah. It's all about your weapon. It is. It's all about freedom. You want to be a battle mage. You go and you be the best battle mage you can be. I love that. If you want to be like, you know, a rogue flitting through the shadows, that's an option too. So how does this work? Basically, each weapon you get uh, unlocks a specific set of skills and a play style, right? Okay. So like if you have a staff equipped, you're going to be a healer. Yeah, makes sense. But you throw on some daggers, boom, now you are a whirlwind of death. I love it. Okay, so for our listeners who love to play solo, carving their own path, what should they be looking at? Solo play. Definitely dual wielding for those big damage numbers. Okay. And when I say dual wielding, I'm talking the Venomous Whispers build. Ooh, Venomous Whispers. It is. Dual wielding Serpent's Kiss and Viper's Bite. Nice. Daggers. Okay. Both of those are early game. You can pick them up at Whispering Woods. Oh, very nice. And what makes this good for solo players? So Serpent's Kiss has like a stacking poison effect. Yeah. And then Viper's Bite makes your crits extra juicy on poisoned enemies. Ooh, nasty. You're just melting faces. So you're a whirling dervish of poison? Exactly. I love that. What about players who like to take it a little slower, a little more methodically? Oh, if you want to be a little tankier, sword and board's the way to go. Okay. And there's a build we like to call the stalwart protector. The stalwart protector. I uh, love it. You just stand there and you take it. Okay, what weapons are we talking here? So that would be the Guardian's Bulwark Shield and the Oathkeeper Sword. Right. They're a little harder to find a little later in the game. Okay, and what makes that good for the tankier solo player? So the Guardian's Bulwark, it's got this passive, right, unyielding defense. Okay. Every time you block an attack, you get a stack. Nice. Each stack makes your next block cost less stamina. So you just get tankier and tankier. You become a brick wall. Love it. <laughs> Okay, but even brick walls need a way to fight back, right? Of course. And for that, we have the Oathkeeper Sword. Now, it doesn't have those flashy poison procs. Right. But it has a passive called Righteous Repost. Okay. When you block an attack with your Guardian's Bulwark Shield, boom, next attack is supercharged with holy energy. So you're saying there's a reason they call it the Stalwart Protector? Exactly. <laughs> Patience. Timing. Then, bam, you hit him with a counterattack. Beautiful. Okay, let's talk about team play. No. Not everyone wants to be a lone wolf, right? Some people, they want to be the heart of the party. Oh, yeah. And for those players, the healer is essential. It's true. Healers are the best. And in Throne and Liberty, healers aren't just standing around, you it, know. Yeah, they're more dynamic. They're the strategic core. They're yeah. buffing. They're keeping everyone alive. It's a whole thing. I love it. So what do healers use? The staff. The staff. Classic. Yeah, but not just any staff. The Life Song staff for the Beacon of Hope build. Beacon of Hope. Okay, I like it already. Right. So what makes that good for group play? Okay, so the Life Song Staff has this ability called Harmony. You get it from a quest in Silverwood Grove, by the way. Good to know. Good to know. So Harmony takes some of the healing you're doing, right? Yeah. And it turns it into this aura that surrounds you and your allies. Nice. And that aura, it boosts everyone's damage. So you're healing and you're a damage buff. You're a force multiplier. It's beautiful. Okay, so you said earlier that healers aren't just about healing in this game. Right. You have uh, to think ahead. You yeah. know, you got to know what's coming. Yeah, yeah. The Life Song staff also has this area of effect spell called Tranquil Bloom. Heals everyone in the area, but also gives them a damage reduction buff. So it's like a preemptive heal. Exactly. You're one step ahead. So you're not just healing, you're mitigating damage before it happens. You are the shield. You are the savior. Wow. Being a healer sounds intense. It is. It's all about strategy and timing. But it sounds rewarding. Oh, when you carry that party through a tough dungeon, there's no feeling like it, let me tell you. You've sold me on healing. Yes. But before I pick up a staff, let's talk about PvP. PvP. Oh, you're talking about those players who live for the thrill of the fight, huh? The best of the best. In PvP, positioning is everything. Knowing your role and, of course, having the right build. Speaking of builds, for those who like to dominate from afar, I'd recommend checking out the Phantom Marksman build. Phantom Marksman. Sounds cool. I like it. This build is all about the Sky Piercer bow. Okay. 
Tell me more about the Sky Piercer bow. So you can get the Sky Piercer from the Trials of the Wind. The Trials of the Wind, okay. And what makes it so good for PvP? Well, it's got incredible range, for one. Makes sense for a bow. Right. <laughs> but the real kicker is this passive ability it's got called Zephyr's Embrace. Okay, Zephyr's Embrace. Essentially, every time you hit an enemy, you get a stack. Okay. Each stack does two things. One, it makes you move faster. Two, it reduces all your cooldowns. So you're just dancing around, peppering them with arrows. Classic kiting. Precisely. Hit, move, hit, move. You're a phantom. They can't touch you. So for the phantom marksman, it's more than just being accurate. Oh yeah, it's about map knowledge, positioning. Outsmarting your opponent. You got it. Now, on the other side of the coin, we've got those players who want to be right in the thick of it, right? The ones who like to get their hands dirty. For those players, I present to you the Ironclad Vanguard. Ironclad Vanguard. This build is all about the Bastion Shield and the Vindicator Sword. Love it. Tell me more. The Ironclad Vanguard is all about disrupting, stunning, and then unleashing a devastating counterattack. Sounds intense. I like it. It is. So the Bastion Shield has this ability, Seismic Slam. Okay. Big area of effect slam. Mm -hmm. Damages enemies, interrupts their attacks and can even stun them. Wow, that's a lot. Right, so you use that to create an opening, and then- Boom, hit him with the Vindicator. Exactly, and this sword, oh, it's special. It's got a passive called Justice Delivered. Ooh, I like the sound of that already. Every time you block an attack with the Bastion Shield, it charges up your next attack with the Vindicator. Okay. Fully charged. It becomes this massive cleave. You're gonna be chopping through enemies like butter. Amazing. So we've got our ranged DPS with the Phantom Marksman, our melee bruiser with the Ironclad Vanguard. But is there anything for players who, you know, don't like labels, they want to do a bit of everything? Of course. Yeah. Hybrid builds are where it's at for those players. One of my favorites is the Ethereal Weaver. Ethereal Weaver? I'm intrigued. He combines the Astral Tome with the Starfire Blade. Okay, so we're mixing magic and melee. You got it. You're casting spells, <laughs> zipping around the battlefield, buffing allies. You're a jack of all trades. Love it. Okay, so we've talked about a lot of builds today, but how does any of this change when you hit the end game? Ah, the end game. That's where things get really interesting. We're talking massive raids, epic PvP battles. Hundreds of players all fighting at once. The stakes are higher, the challenges are tougher, and your build. It's more important than ever. Right, because now you're not just facing down a couple of boars. Exactly. You're facing down world-ending dragons. And you can bet that in those situations, having a skilled healer it makes all the difference. It's true. A good healer can make or break a raid. Oh, absolutely. Mm. And don't underestimate a good tank. They might not be flashy, but when that dragon breathes fire, they're the ones holding the line. So even in the end game, with all the crazy builds out there, it still comes down to the fundamentals. It really does. Know your role, master your build, and you'll be well on your way to conquering throne and liberty. And that's what makes MMOs so much fun. There's always something new to learn, a new challenge to overcome. Absolutely. And that's where you come in, listeners. What builds are you excited about? What challenges are you facing? Let us know in the comments. We might even feature your insights in a future episode. Until then, happy gaming, everyone.